Hey everybody, it is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring, and today is Saturday, October 5th, 2024. Hey, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming and visiting me this weekend for my weekend review podcast. I hope it's uh, going to be helpful. I hope you're going to learn something. And uh, if you have any questions along the way uh, during and watching the podcast, put some comments in the comment section or your questions, and I'll do my very best to answer them. So, okay, well, interesting week in the markets, and uh, we'll take a look later in the podcast as far as some potential trades, but the main uh, format for the podcast today is, first of all, we're going to run the U.S. legal disclaimer. Secondly, we're going to come back, we're going to take a look at all the current trades that I made last week, both the uh, open trades that I have. And uh, also, I have some closed trades, and we'll talk about why I got out of those. But we'll talk about when I, when I entered the trade, why I entered the trade, what the setup was, what the signals were, what the confluences, combinations of everything lining up in order for me to make the decision to take the trade. And then, most importantly, how I am going to manage the trade going forward. And uh, what the initial stops were, what the emergency stop was, what the end of bar stop was, how I'm going to take partial profits or how I took partial profits and uh, looking for significant overhead resistance levels. And then some of the trades that I have that are, you know, really going up, how I'm tightening up my stop and looking for a trailing stop. So we'll talk about uh, when I entered the trade, why I entered trade and how I am going to manage these trades going forward, whether they go my way or go against me. After that, we are gonna talk a little bit about trader psychology. Most important skill in trading everyone, I mention this every week, but the most important skill is the ability to create a plan and then follow that plan, whether it goes your way or goes against you. Um, That's the key. That's the key to the Lamborghini, or that's the key to the Rolls Royce, is the ability to have that plan and follow it. Sometimes it's hard to follow it, right? I mean, you have a nice gain right off the back. You think, ooh, maybe I'll just lock this in. Um, but that's, that's probably not the right thing to do because it can go much higher. Things can go much higher than you think. Things can go much lower than you think. And uh, so, you know, it's important. You adhere to your stop. You let your winners run, and that all comes down to trader psychology. So there are a lot of good trading methodologies, good trading approaches uh, out there. But if you if you don't follow them, you know what's what's the use? So anyway, I always like to teach this. It's important and helpful for me. I hope it's going to be helpful for you as well. And then after that, we are. I have gone down through my watch list. I did it last night on my master watch list and looked at potential setups uh, for the coming week, both on the daily time frame and the weekly time frame. Uh, this is a very important part of my trading. Is what I do on Friday nights, where I go through and I I go through each stock and I say, look, or, or each market, and I I look at it and I say, look, if it goes down to here then X, Y, and Z are going to trigger there. Uh, we'll have confluences if it goes down to here. And it may never go, it may, it may never get to that level. And if it doesn't get to that level, then I'm just not going to trade that market. But eventually something will come to where it made sense to me to buy it. Maybe it's a deep dip buy. Maybe it's coming down, okay, three or 4% lower uh, from Friday night. Uh, we get to the 200-day moving average, we get to the 30 RSI, maybe there's a uh, bullish order block there at the same time. That's the key. Uh, Just looking when the market's closed, looking and saying, you know, if it gets here, that makes sense. Doesn't mean that trade, If even if it gets there, doesn't mean that trade's going to be a profitable trade, certainly. But in my experience, I've been trading for about 29 years now, uh, it works a lot more than it doesn't. Uh, patience is a big, big key in trading. So uh, I have identified uh, some potential markets, both on the daily timeframes and the weekly timeframes. I don't know if any of them are going to get there, but if they do, that's when I will enter the trade. So again, I hope this is going to be helpful. I hope you're going to learn something. If you do and you find something of value, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. and, And like I said earlier, 
If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section and I will do my best to answer your questions or reply to your comments, okay? All right, so let's get started and uh, run this US legal disclaimer. I'll be back in about uh, 42 seconds and we'll, get, and we'll get going. Thanks. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get started on the current daily open position. So this is Google, G-O-O-G-L. And on this particular setup, I'm going to spend a little bit more time just going over the basics, okay? Um, uh, and then as I go through the other positions, I won't take as much time. But, you know, for people that are new and kind of trying to understand the process of how I trade, I just want to spend a little bit more uh, time on this one. So this is Google. I did buy Google all the way back here on the 9th of September. And this is one of those setups. I, I was just talking about being patient, waiting for it to get there. Well, in this area here, I said, you know, here, this orange line, this is the 300 day moving average. This is a deep dip by this strategy here, this trade. Uh, was taken using a deep dip by strategy. A deep dip by strategy uses the 200 day moving average, the 250 day moving average, the 300 day moving average, and the 30 RSI. And, uh, you know, the, if, if you can have a 30 RSI at the same time you get to the 200 or to the 250 or to the 300, then that improves the chances of the trade. So the, the black line, the purple line, and the orange line 200, 250, 300. On this particular trade, I took this because at the end of the day, it had rejected the, the 300 day moving average. And, or in other words, during the day, it had gone below the 300 day moving average and then it closed back above. On these deep dip buys and a lot of the strategies that I use, I wait for the closing price because the closing price is the most important price of the day. During the day, you get all sorts of craziness, all sorts of nonsense, but at the end of the day, in that last hour, and in particular in the last 50, 20, 15 minutes, the large financial institutions come in, they make their decisions, they're dealing with the most money, they have very smart people, they have the best information, they have very good technology, and I like to follow what they are doing. So. During the day, we had an intraday rejection of the 300 day moving average. That is the signal. In addition to that, we also had a double bottom bullish divergence. What is that? Well, let's take a look at these lows over here. Look how deep the red MACD bars are. These are momentum bars. The further these bars go down, the stronger the momentum or the stronger the, the, the selling pressure. Okay, so if we look at this low here, we have pretty deep Mac, green Mac, or uh, red MACD bars. Then we have a rally, then we come and we go lower, right? Here where I bought, this is certainly lower than over here, right? But look at the MACD bars, the red MACD bars. They're red, but they are not as deep as they were over here. So what that's indicating is that, yes, this looks like a big down move, and it was, but from a MACD perspective, it was not as strong as this previous down move. And so the implication there is that you are, well, it's showing you that the selling pressure is being reduced. And the implication is that you are running out of sellers. And if you run out of sellers, then most likely you're gonna go up. So that was the combination. I keep talking about looking for combinations and confluences. This was the combination of the trade. We have a lower low, but it comes on uh, 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 weaker MACD momentum to the downside. So we have a double bottom bullish divergence is what this is called. 
But even though you have a double bottom bullish divergence, you still need an actual entry trigger so that you can construct your trade and you know where your stops are and so forth. So this particular trade, very easy. Again, we have the double bottom bullish divergence, but then we have the rejection of the 300 day moving average. So as soon as I have my signal and there is my signal, very important thing that you have to do is you have to figure out how many shares of something you're going to buy. And I base this off the two ATR. I base it off the volatility of the market. If the market volatility is higher, you're going to buy fewer shares. If it's lower, you're going to buy more shares. So the formula that I have works very well for me. And let's just, it, it's based upon how much money you have in your trading account. So let's just assume for this example that I have $100,000, right? $100,000, I take 1% of that $100,000, 1% of $100,000 is $8,000. If I had $50,000, 1% is 500. If I had a million, 1% is 10,000, right? So it works for anything. If you have $25,000 trading account, 1% is $250. So for this example, let's just say $100,000 times 1% is $1,000. And I take the $1,000, I divide it by the value of the two ATR. This factors in the volatility. So I take $1,000 at the time there, divided by 6.14. It tells me to buy 163 shares. It says 162.88, but I just round up to 163 shares. So now that is the proper amount of shares to buy for me based upon the count value and based upon the market volatility. So 162 or 163 shares. Now, so I entered at 148.58. The first thing I do is I place my emergency stop exactly 6.14 below my entry. So if I have 163 shares and it moves down, 6.14, how much do I lose? I lose 1% of my account. So the good news is that this emergency stop is only hit about 5% of the time. 95% of the time, if you have a losing trade, it will be because you lost your end of bar stop. Remember, I used two stops. Emergency stop for the worst case scenario, then only about 5% of the time does that happen. Other 95% of the time, if it closes below my end of bar stop, I will get out. Well, what's my end of bar stop? My end of bar stop is the opposite of, in this particular strategy, of why I took the trade. I took the trade because it rejected the 300-day moving average. So if the next day it had simply closed one penny below the 300-day moving average, I would be out for a very small loss. And that's the key to trading, everyone. Well, one of the keys is that waiting for a significant level to be to be rejected like it was and then all it has to do is move down a little bit and close down i'm simply out for a really small loss that's the key right that is one of the main keys of trading it's had a good a good risk to reward ratio so i entered here 148.58 my emergency stop two etrs below my end of bar stops a close below the 300 day moving average Okay, so I have a line up here, and this line is exactly 1.5 ATRs above my entry. So the emergency stop is two ATRs below, but I put 1.5 ATRs above my entry is what is called trailing stop level. If the price gets to the trailing stop level, then I'm in trailing stop mode. I don't do anything, it just means that now that I'm in trailing stop level, if in the future I get a close below a previous bar's low, I'm going to exit half as a preventative measure. Okay, so uh, now all the things that I've talked about so far, the position sizing correctly, the uh, emergency stop, the end of bar stop, the trailing stop mode, these are all defensive moves. If something happens and goes against me like the emergency stop or end of bar stop or that i get a, a close below a previous bar slow after reaching trailing stop level these are defensive moves something went against me but i also play offense just like any great sports team 
and in sports. You need to play offense and defense. So the stops, the trailing stop mode, these are defensive moves. But I also play offense, and the way I play offense is I take the closing price of the day. Right now it's 167.07, so I'm going to take 167.07. I'm going to add the value of the 0.45 ATR. Right now the 0.45 ATR is a dollar thirty-eight. This is 0.45 of an average true range of a day. So uh, I'm going to take the closing price 167.07, add the value of the 0.45 to it plus one. 0.38, 168.45 is going to be my first profit target for Monday. And I always place three. Okay. So my first profit target on Monday is 168.45. So I'm going to take 168.45, which is my first profit target, add the 0.45 to it again, plus 1.38. My second profit target is going to be 169.83. Then I'm going to take the second profit target, add it one more time, 171.21. So these are my three profit targets for Monday. And if I reach a profit target, I will take off 10% of the remaining shares that I have. And it, I do this every day. So I have to recalculate every day. I'll put a lim three limit orders in every day for those profit targets. If it goes up, maybe I hit one, maybe I hit two. If I'm really lucky, I hit three. And what that does is it starts to reduce my position size on the way up, which is what I want to happen. And then if we get a big turn down, boy, am I really glad that I took some profits off. So that's the offensive part of the trade. So those are kind of the basics. So again, we had the to the entry was the confluence of the double bottom bullish divergence with the rejection of the 300 day moving average. I position size correctly, as I just mentioned, got in at 148.58. I placed my emergency stop two ATRs below my end of bar stops and closed below the 300 day moving average. I placed my 1.5 trailing stop level above here. And again, if it moves up the value of 0.45 ATRs or more, the next day I'm going to take some profits. So the next day it opened, went up higher. I took a little, I took one profit target. Then it closed back down. Next day, oh, it's under the 300 day moving average. Do I do anything? No, because I wait for the close and it reversed up nicely. I hit another profit target. Remember, I'm only taking 10% of the remaining shares that I have off. Then it moved up again the next day, took another profit target off. Now I'm in trailing stop mode. Now, this means in the future, if I have a close below a previous bar's low, I'll exit half of the remaining shares. Okay, so it got to trailing stop mode, but it kept going up, took some profits here, no profits here, took some profits here, no profits here. I believe I took two profit targets on this day. And then we had an inside day. And then here on the 23rd of September, we had our first close below a previous bar's low after reaching trailing stop level. What did I do? I took off half of the remaining shares that I have, right? It's not the amount that I started with because I was taking profits on the way up, but I took off half of the remaining shares for a gain of 8.24%. So now the pressure is really off, right? I've scaled out on the way up. I've taken half off with the close below the previous bars low. And so now if it keeps moving up, I'll keep scaling. If we get to the 70 RSI level or we get to the 65 RSI level, then that activates different rules, okay? And, or if it just comes down, if it just kept coming down, 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 well, you know, if it closed below the 300 day moving average, I would get out. So closed below the previous bars low, got out of half, and we kind of went sideways here. We did get a profit target here. We did get one here on the 1st of, of October. And now um, on the 1st of October, we got to a 65 RSI level. So now, like I just mentioned, other rules come into play. If I ever get to a 65 RSI level, 
then this 5 EMA here, this light, this thin light blue line, this is now my trailing stop for the entire trade. So to make it easy, in the future, if Monday we close below this 5 EMA, that's it. I'm done with the trade. That is it. However, if it keeps moving up, I'll continue to take partial profits. And then if it rejects the 70 RSI, meaning it went above 70 during the day and then closed below the 70, or it closes above 70, and then in the future it closes below 70, then I take another half of what I have remaining. So, uh, so right now, if it keeps going up, take partial profits. If it closes below the 5 EMA, I'm completely out of trade. So the remaining shares on uh, uh, the remaining shares that I have on this particular trade up 11.03%. So it's been a really good trade. It really gives you a good example of being patient, waiting for a major level to be rejected that has a really good risk to reward ratio. This is about the best that you could potentially uh, ask for. And then having the ability to have a big trade and this turn into a big trade. So, you know, the key, the key, one of the key, great keys in trading is being very impatient with your losing trades, meaning that you get in, stops below your stop, immediately get out. Hopefully that stops small if, if your risk to reward was good. And being very impatient with your losing trades, very, being very patient with your winning trades and having a process that keeps you in your winning trades. And I definitely, you know, rules, rules is a process. I have many rules and I have very good processes and I just follow them. It's important that you follow them. And by the way, if you would like to learn my trading processes, I teach seven different trading approaches, seven different strategies. I use them all myself. You'll see more of these uh, today. But if you're interested uh, in studying with me and having me teach you all the different trading approaches that I use, I think you'll learn a lot. I teach a course. It's a one on one course. It's 15 hours long. There's five sessions. Each session is three hours. That's where you get the 15. I've taught people from all around the world, from absolute beginners all the way up to the hedge fund level. It's a great course. You're going to learn a skill. And if you're interested, just send me an email. My email is in the link of this YouTube video and we can start a conversation, but uh, it's a great thing to learn. It's a great thing. You know, if you have a, it, it's to learn a good trading skill uh, process is a great asset to have as long as you follow it. So anyway, if you'd like to, if you'd like to, me to teach you what I know and what I use, just send me an email. We get started. So here on Google, the remaining shares I have up 11 point zero three percent so really really good trade okay vix vix has also been a very good trade this is a different type of trade this is not a deep dip buy this is what is called a bullish order block and because of the huge movements in the vix here it kind of skews the charts a little to make it a little bit more difficult uh, but you can see this green box down here. This is called the bullish order block. What's a bullish order block? Well, this one takes a little bit more time to explain, but a bullish order block is your lowest bar close, which happened here on the 23rd of July, followed by a big move up that takes out, takes out a swing high. Basically, this changes the market structure into a bullish market structure. And once you change into a bullish market structure, if the price comes back down into that green box, that's the buyable area. So it changed market structure, pulled back. Of course, we had this huge move up and then huge move down. But here on the 19th of August, we came into the, we rejected the top of the bullish order block. So I did get long at 44 70. Now, of course, as soon as I get long, I position size correctly. I place my emergency stop two ATRs below way down here. And then, oh, sorry. And then my end of bar stop is simply a close below the order block. Well, the low of the order block is 42.68. And that's where this line is here, this little red line here. Um, and then, of course, I put my trailing stop level 1.5. 1.5 ATRs above. And then if it moves up the value of 0.45, I take 
partial profits. So it moved up a little bit here, took a profit, came back down here on the 3rd of September, hit multiple profit targets with that huge move up, also got to trailing stop level, which is important. So now I'm in trailing stop level. I wait for the first close below the previous bars low. This happened here on the 10th of September. It closed below a previous bars low after reaching trailing stop level. So the remaining shares I had, I took off for a gain of 12.69%. I kept the remaining shares. We continued to go down. I was glad I took the profits off there. It continued to go down. And now we've had this upswing in the market here on the 1st of October, had a nice uh, profit target as well. So currently the remaining shares on this trade are up 15.83%. And as far as how I'm gonna get out of this trade, well, of course, if it comes down and closes below the bottom of the order block, I'm gonna get out. If we get up to the 65 RSI level, of course, then I'll use the five EMA as a trailing stop. This has been a really good trade here, up 15, the remaining shares up 15.83%. Pfizer. Okay, Pfizer is a different approach. It's a different strategy. You see the green box, but this green box is what is considered, <coughs> excuse me, to be a fair value gap. I also trade fair value gaps. A fair value gap is when you have <clears throat> a move above a previous uh, range or previous pivot point that leaves a gap between, there's three bars here, bar one, two, three. On bar two, bar two is the, the bar that, that change market structure to the upside. So therefore, pullbacks into the green box or the viable area I bought here at 28.85 when it rejected the bottom of the fair value gap. Placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop above. You can see I have my uh, two ATR uh, emergency stop below. And my end of bar stop is the close below this swing low here at 28.28. So I bought it. It immediately bounced, took some profits. We had a huge move up here, took some more profits. And then, and then on the on this particular day, on the 19th, we closed. This was the first time that we closed below a previous bar's low after reaching trailing stop level. Um, and you can see earlier in that day, we had gapped up, went up much higher, and I was able to take some more profits off with the 0.45 profit taking strategy. Uh, but because it did close below the previous bars low, I exited half of the position for a gain of 2.73%. And then it started to move down. Then we had a rally, started to move down. You can see there were two days in a row here that it tested my end of day stop of 28.28. Thursday, during the day, it went below, but closed above. That kept me in the trade. Friday, it went below, closed above. That also kept me in the trade. So the remaining shares that I have here. Oh, sorry. The remaining shares I have are currently at a loss of 0.91%, but overall, the trade is still positive because of taking the partial profits when I had them when it was much more profitable and then exiting half of the position, exiting half of the position with the trailing stop approach. So this trade is still positive, but the remaining shares I have, oh, I'm overall it's positive, but the remaining shares I have currently are at a loss of 0.91%. SPY. Okay, SPY, uh, you can see the red bar here that I have. This is called a bearish abandoned baby. And one of my favorite approaches, I also teach this in my in, in my one-on-one -on -one course, but an abandoned baby, in this case, in a bearish abandoned baby works very well. Doesn't, doesn't make money all the time, obviously. I wish it did, but for me, it makes a lot more money than it doesn't. 
So what is an abandoned baby? An abandoned baby is, it has to do with gaps. You can see on the day of the abandoned baby, we gapped way up, okay? So there was a lot of positive sentiment, whatever the headlines were, whatever the news was gapped up. Well, the very next day it gapped down. See how we have a gap up and then we have a gap down. Well, when this happens, more than likely out into the future, prices are going to be lower because we went from really bullish to immediately bearish right away. And that's the key to this approach. So on this particular trade, I, I position size exactly like I do on the rest of the trades, but this one's much easier as far as the uh, profit and the losses. And what I do is I have a, uh, uh, sorry, one second. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm taking care of I'm dog sitting this dog and it's uh, looking for my attention here. So what I do, I place a uh, uh, two ATR stop or a four ATR profit target. One of those two is going to trigger and it's one and done trade. I'm either going to lose two ATRs or I'm going to make four ATRs. And in my experience with this particular trade, about 70% of the time, I'm going to hit my two ATR profit target, four ATR profit target, about 30% of the time, I am going to hit my particular loss. So I got short here, 569.33. I placed a two ATR profits target above a four ATR profit, or a two ATR stop loss above four ATR profit target below. And one of those two are gonna hit. And right now, this particular trade is at a loss of currently 0.63%. And uh, if it just keeps going up and hits my two ATR profit target, then that's it. I lose 1%. Uh, but if it turns around, goes my way, if it gets to four ATR profit targets, uh, four ATRs, I'll take profits there. So this one currently down 0.63%. And if you'd like to learn more about abandoned babies or island reversals, they're the same thing. It's just that abandoned babies use one bar, island reversals use two bars, uh, two or more bars. Okay, WBA, WBA uh, is a deep dip buy approach. And why? Well, this one, the confluence here are two things. One, on the day that I bought it, and I did buy it here on the 26th of September at 8.51. Why? Because the previous day closed below 30 RSI, and then on the day of the entry, it closed above 30 RSI. That's it. But there was also a confluence here, and the confluence was a double bottom bullish divergence with a missing right shoulder. So let's go over here. You see the lows we have here. You see the deep red MACD bars. Then we rally, and then we came back to here. But look here. We're certainly lower here than we are over here, right? But there were not even any red bars whatsoever. This is called the double bottom bullish divergence with a missing right shoulder. It's even stronger because the missing right shoulder is showing us that even though we're much lower than the previous low, we can't even get the MACD to go to red. So it's showing that you are running out of sellers and therefore most likely to go up. So I did get long here on the 26th of September at 851 with the under 30 over 30 deep dip by keeping in mind we had the double bottom bullish divergence with the missing right shoulder so i position size correctly got in at 851 placed my emergency stop two atrs below placed my trailing or not my trailing stop but my um, yeah my trailing stop level here at 905 1.5 atrs above my entry and the next day just took off like a rocket ship. And I did hit three profit targets on this particular day on this really strong bar. And we also got the trailing stop, which now means if I have a close below a previous bar's low, I will get out of half. Well, that did happen here on the 1st of October. We closed below the we closed below a previous bar's low after reaching trailing stop level. I sold half of the position for a gain of 2.30%. Now, this is really interesting because 
one of the rules for an under 30 over 30 is if I go under 30 over 30 and I get to trailing stop level, then if it ever comes back to my entry, then I simply get out because under 30 over 30s tend to bounce and then sometimes they'll come back down and just go lower. So if it gets to trailing stop level, I don't want to give that nice profit back. But you can see my entry here on Thursday, it within a penny or two got to my break even. But I did not get out because it did not get to my break even. And obviously I was very glad because it reversed off of that level and then gapped up on Monday, uh, gapped up on Friday where I also took some, some partial profits as well. So this is a deep dip by under 30 over 30 with the double bottom bullish divergence missing right shoulder. And this particular trade, the remaining shares I have up 2.41%. Okay, so those are the, the current open daily trades. Google uh, up 11.03, VIX up 15.83, Pfizer down 0.91%. The SPY, abandoned, bearish abandoned baby, down 0.63%. Uh, WBA, Walgreens, the remaining shares up 2.41%. Oh, I forgot Boeing. Okay, so Boeing. I did get long on Boeing here on the 25th of September. Okay, why? Well, this is a little unorthodox trade here. But you can see the low over here on the 5th of August. You can see the lows here on the 16th of September. When you draw this channel, when you connect these bottoms, when you go out into time here, usually the projection of that channel, a lot of, a lot of the times, when it gets to the projection in the future, it will bounce. Well, it's exactly what it did. And then we also have this trend line here from this swing high to this, or this swing high to this swing high. And we connect those. And on the 23rd of September, we broke this trend, this downward trend line to the upside. Now, the significance of that is when you break a trend line to the upside, very often it will come back and retest that trend line, which is exactly what it did. And that's what got me into the trade here on the 25th at 152.30. Okay, so that was the entry of this, of this or that was the, the signal that got me into the trade. I position size correctly. I placed my two ATR emergency stop below. Now on this one, what is my end of bar stop? Because this is a bit of an unorthodox trade, my end of bar stop would simply be a close below this trend line because if you close below this trend line, then it just kind of indicates that that trend line's not holding anymore. And so we went up, took, a, took one partial profits, came back down, we again tested below that trend line but closed up. Above. You can see ever since I entered the trade, it has not closed below the trend line and that has kept me in the trade. And on Friday, I did, it moved up $4.48. You can see the 0.45 is 202. So I did hit two profit targets. So anyway, this particular trade doing well up 1.88%. We are not at trailing stop level yet. So a close below a previous bars low does not come into effect for that particular rule until we get to the trailing stop level, but it is currently up 1.88%. Okay, so those are the open daily trades. Let's go to the close trades. I did exit some trades this week. Um, Intel, all right, we've talked about bullish order blocks here, back here on the 7th of uh, August was our lowest low close before market structure change, making the high and the low of this order block, the green area here. So we changed structure, we came back down into the green area. I So this is the buyable area I did buy here on 9-11 at 1907 because we went below the 
the bullish order block and then we created a v2 bar one bar two bar three bar two goes below bar one's low bar three closed above bar one's close i use v1s v2s very often in my trading really i i probably one of the things i use the most if you'd like to learn more about v1s v2s go to my youtube channel i have a video about it but the really good entry and in addition to that everyone i've been talking about double bottom bullish macd divergence let's look at the low over here deep red macd bars we rally we come lower we are definitely lower here than here right any red bars not whatsoever right that so that's another confluence of signals of why i took the trade so i entered when the V2 happened here in 1907, placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level above, my two ATR emergency stop below, and my end bar stops is simply a close below this order block, and it just took off like a rocket ship. Moved up, moved up, moved up, got to trailing stop level, took a lot of profits. I think two profit targets on this particular day and got to trailing stop level. Next day, gapped up again, took more profits. Here on the 18th, was our first close below a previous bar's low after reaching trailing stop level. I did take off half of the position there for a gain of, oh, sorry. Yeah, 8.15%. 8. 8 and then we just continued higher. Gapped open, took some more profits, took some more profits here, took some more profits here. When we were up in this area, we were above the 65 RSI level, 65 or higher. And so therefore the five EMA comes into play as my trailing stop. This is this line here. So as long as it closes above that, I'm gonna keep it here on October 1st. We had, our, we had the close below the five EMA after reaching trailing stop level. And I did, I did exit and book profits on the remaining shares for a gain of 15.91%. So the order block, the bullish order block, along with the double bottom bullish divergence, along with the V2 entry really worked out. So a gain of 15.91% on Intel. Q's, okay, another uh, long-term position that I did enter based upon what my rules said. I entered Q's all the way back here, August 5th, deep dip buy intraday rejection of the 200 day moving average intraday rejection of the 30 rsi intraday rejection of a long-term trend line okay this is all deep dip by stuff place my emergency stop two atrs below my 1.5 trailing uh level 1.5 above my end of bar stop simply a close below the 200 day moving average so i entered at 435 31 had this huge move up here continue to take profits along the way with 0.45 here on the 22nd of august was our first close below a previous bars low after re reaching trailing stop level locked in a gain of 8.59 percent on half of the position then we had this move back down in the market but it held above the 200 so i kept it and then we had this straight up rocket ship uh, where i continued to take partial profits and uh, here on the 1st of October uh, was the first time that it closed below the five EMA. That's why I exited the position. And again, if I get up to a 65 RSI level, then the five EMA comes into play and I took part or I took uh, the remaining shares off for a gain of 9.51%. So done with Qs, done with Intel and oh, then we have Tesla. Uh, also bought Tesla with a deep dip buy. The black line is the 200 day moving average. We went under the 200 during the day, closed above, got long 206 even, placed my emergency stop two ATRs below. End of bar stop is a close below the 200 day moving average. Trailing stop level 1.5 ATRs above. Had a nice move up, took partial profits along the way, especially this day. And then boom, here on the 6th of September, big move down. Not sure why that happened on that day, but big move down. Obviously closed below the previous bars low. I got out of half of the position 
for a gain of 3.19%. And glad I held half, right? Because look what happened after that. Straight up move, of course, continue to take profits, continue to take profits, continue to take profits all the way. And then I did exit Tesla on the 2nd of October. We had our first close below the five EMA after reaching 65 RSI level. And I locked in the remaining shares for a gain of 17.29%. So pretty amazing. And, you know, I guess what I want to say here is the importance of following your process. Trades don't always work out like this, trust me. But sometimes they do. Trust me on that as well. You have to have a process that's going to keep you in this trade. I mean, if, if I would have bought here, you know, maybe here four days later, I'd say, ah, oh, you know what? That's a nice profit. I'm just going to take it. I could buy a jet ski with that money or whatever, right? Well, that would have been the wrong thing to do because there's nothing about that chart that tells you to get out of the trade. Nothing about the price action tells you to get out of the trade and you would have missed out on this. So, you know, most people talk about getting out of your, you know, getting out of a position when your stop hits. Yes, you need to do that for sure. But just as importantly, you have to stay in a position when it's going your way until your rules tell you to get out. You have to have those large wins. People always say, oh, you can't, you can never go broke taking, taking, or taking a profit. That's really not true. Well, it's true if you never have a loss, but you are gonna have losses. And you have to have some of these big outsized gain to pay for those inevitable losses that you're gonna have. All right, so out of Tesla, thank you, Tesla, uh, the, uh, got out of the remaining for a gain of 17.29%. Okay, so those are the closed trades. Intel, remaining shares up 15.91%. Q's, remaining shares up 9.51%. And Tesla up 17.29%. Okay, let's go to the weekly charts. Those were all the dailies open and closed, but I also trade weekly charts weekly charts close on Friday. So on Fridays, I have to take a look. So I did get short Apple, again, weekly shares. I did get short Apple at 228.80. Why? Well, there's a red box here. That's probably indicating that I'm looking for a short trade. This is an order block, but it's a bearish order block. Why is it a bearish order block? Okay. So back here on the 12th of July was your highest up bar close before market structure changed. So the market structure changed to the downside. If your market structure changes to the downside, if the price moves back up into that order block, you want to short that rally. At least that's how I look at it. If you change market structure to the upside, then you want to buy that first dip. But if you change market structure to the downside, you want to short the rallies. That's what I do. So I shorted here in the red box. Why? Why here instead of here? Well, this big bar here on the 19th of July, big down bar. If you have a big down bar and you go back to halfway of that bar, right? So here's the down bar. Here's the halfway. You're usually going to find some resistance there. And that's exactly why I shorted again, in the bearish order block at the 50% mark of the big down bar. So I shorted here 228.80. I placed my emergency stop two ATRs above. As always, my end of bar stop is simply a close above the order block, the high of the order block, which is 232.81. Place my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level. The next week, it moved down moved my way and it moved enough for me to take some profits off. So I did lock in some profits at more profitable level it, th than it is now. Also reduced my position size. So if we get a big move up, it minimizes the loss. So took some profits on this bar. Next week didn't do much. Next week gap down where I took some more profits off. And then we rallied up, we rallied up. But again, it has not closed above the high of the order block. And this particular weekly trade on Apple on the short side is currently up 0.8, sorry, yes, 
0.86%. So short on Apple, not up a lot, but up 0.86%. Okay, let's go to Disney again on the weekly. This was a deep dip buy. This has turned into a really good trade. Uh, during that week, it went under 30, over 30. That was the signal. Under 30, over 30. That's a deep dip buy signal. I got long here, 85.90. Placed my emergency stop, two ATRs below. My end of bar stop was a close below 89, or, sorry, 82.95. Placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level above. As it moved up, took partial profits, didn't do much for a month, moved up a little bit here. Here on the 20th of September, it moved up enough for me to take partial profits and get to trailing stop mode. So now I'm in trailing stop mode, which means if I have a close below previous bars low, I'm simply gonna get out of half. This particular trade, weekly trade doing well, up 9.72%. And then last but not least, QLD, this is a short position that I took on QLD. This is double leverage uh, Qs. This again is a bearish order block. Here is your highest up bar close before market structure change. Uh, again, we had the big down bar. So a rally back to that halfway is my shortable area. Uh, it did reject it. I did get short at $100 and 20 cents it is now 100 dollars and 29 cents so currently i am down on the trade about 0.13 percent so not too bad so far again emergency stop two atrs above end of bar stop a close above the uh, bearish order block at 107.11 have my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level down here. So basically a uh, break even trade. So the weekly is really good or uh, decent. I mean, not as good as the daily, not as good as the dailies, but Apple up 0.86%, Disney up 9.72% and QLD uh, down 0.13%. So those are the daily and the weekly trades. I, I hope that was helpful for you to kind of see uh, some of these different uh, strategies um, in action, right? Not just one strategy, but what do we use? We use deep dip buys, we use order blocks, we use fair value gaps. So out of, uh, oh, an abandoned, no, we didn't have an abandoned, yes, we did have an abandoned baby on SPY. So about four different, four different ones there, but you can see these have worked very, very, very well. They don't always work like this. So, okay, so those are the current trades. Let's uh, talk a little bit about trader psychology before we move on to the potential trades for next week. Okay, so this trader psychology post comes from my good friend, Steve Burns. Steve's a great trader. He is a, an author of many, many books. Uh, check out his books, Steve Burns books on Amazon so many great books so many great things to learn and uh, Steve has a great post here and this is really what trading psychology comes down to you know at the beginning of the podcast I talked about following the process and not getting you know getting out when you're supposed to get out if it goes against you but letting it ride if it's moving your way well, a lot of, I don't think there's enough discussion about this part it's all focused on your stops, but you also have to let winners run. But again, you have to have a process to do that. But let's see what Steve has to say about this. 90% of traders are unprofitable because, 90% of traders are unprofitable because one, fear destroys their ability to let winners run. Most of the time we talk about fear, it's about losing money but it's also about uh, the ability to let winners run. You have to let winners run. So number one, fear destroys their ability to let winners run. Number two, greed destroys their ability to position size correctly. Position size correctly, when it all comes down to it, it's the most important thing in trading. 
you can have the best setup in the world, but it doesn't mean it's going to work. And if you bet your entire account on that one trade, well, maybe 99 times out of 100, that one wins. But the one time you took it, 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 it lost it. Well, if you position size correctly, it's not a problem because you survive to fight another day. But greed destroys the ability to position size correctly. So you have to position size correctly. And I demonstrated how I did it early in the podcast. Their ego, number three, their ego destroys their emotional control. Well, to me, when it talks about ego destroying their emotional control, it's talking about not getting out of losing trades. I know this company is going to go up because this, that, and the other, but it's going down. Doesn't matter. It's going to go up. Well, sometimes they don't go up. And that is number three, their ego destroys their emotional control is about not taking, uh, adhering to their stops. So number one and number three, number one is about letting winners run. Number three is about cutting losses. And number two is about position sizing correctly. It's important, everybody. You have to get yourself a process with rules. You can work with me, my one-on-one course. I'll teach you all my rules. They're good rules. Or learn them from someone else. But the important thing is whoever you learn them from, maybe you discover them yourself, you have to follow them. It is the most important part. So 90% of profit traders are unprofitable because they don't let their fear destroys their ability to let their winners run. Greed destroys their ability to position size correctly. And number three, their ego destroys their emotional control. I chalk this one up to uh, not adhering to stops. Trading is 80% psychology. So that's why I always talk about trader psychology and how important it is. So thank you very much, Steve. This is a really great post. And uh, don't be one of the 90%. Let those winners run. Have a process to let them run. Don't be greedy. Position size correctly and get out of your stop and get out of your positions when your stops tell you to get out of your positions. Okay, let's go and talk about the potential trades for next week, shall we? I have some good ones. Now, here on the day on these dailies i have seven seven potential signals for next week theoretically monday all seven of them could trigger does it mean i would take seven no i always narrow down to one per day you could have seven great setups on monday but i'm still going to narrow it down to the best one how do i make that decision which one has the most confluence of the signals which one has the best risk to reward ratio? Which one looks best on higher time frames? I also look at the higher time frames. Which one market strength, the relative market strength or weakness compared to the rest of the market? These are how I narrow down. They get a score, basically. However many entry signals, they get a point. Risk to reward ratio, one's better than the other, that gets more points than the other ones. It looks better on higher time frames, that one adds a point. So which one at the end of the day, if all seven of these trigger, then all I'm going to take the one that has the best score. And again, this is what I teach all my students in my one on course. And this is very important. The devil's in the details. So again, if all seven of these triggered, I'm only going to take one. Amazon. Okay. Well, I talked earlier a little bit about abandoned babies and island reversals. Well, Amazon had a abandoned baby. Look, on Wednesday, we gapped down. So for whatever reason, we gapped down. The sentiment was negative. But look at Friday. Boom. So we gapped down, immediately gap up. This is bullish. This is bullish. Normally, more times than not, when you have a bullish abandoned baby, in the future, prices are going to be higher. Not all the time, but more times than not. Okay, so... The abandoned baby triggered on um, on Friday. Does that mean I buy it? I could. Technically, yes. I could have just bought this right here as it is. But it's a little far extended. And you can see in the green box, we have the high and the low of the bar in the green box. The, the high of the box, or I'm sorry. Well, yeah. The high of the box, the high of the bar. This is going to be some support and actually look what happened exactly that it gapped higher came down 
basically touched the high of that box and then zoomed right back up. So this is case in point. This just shows you that the top of this bar here tends to have some support. Well, I didn't catch it intraday. And so going forward in the future, if it comes back down to the high of that abandoned baby day here, 183.44, this would be my viable area. I don't know. I may have I may have lost out on this one. This one just may go. Who knows? But if it does come back down to 183.44, very likely that's where I will consider taking the trade. And because it's an abandoned baby, two ATR profit target to the downside, four ATR profit target to the upside, I'll let it run one. Eventually, I'm going to hit my two ATR stop or my four ATR profit target. And that's the process that I use on Abandoned Baby. So if we come back down to 183.44 sometime next week, I will consider getting long there. ARK Innovation, A-R-K-K. -K. Okay, well, you see a red box. Red box means I'm probably looking for a short. Why is short there? Well, on the 27th of September was our highest up bar close before market structure change, we changed market structure here on the first by taking out this swing low. So this bring, this puts it into a bearish market structure. What do I wanna do with bear, bearish market structures? I wanna short the rallies. So if it gets into this red box here, somewhere between 4807 and 4741, I will consider getting short. I'll position size, place my stop two ATRs above. My my end of bar stop will be a close above the high of this order block, 4807. Place my trailing stop level, all that stuff we've talked about all day long. But is it going to get there? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to get there. Maybe not. Maybe it's just going to turn down and I'll miss the whole thing. But it's fine because it never triggered the trade, right? That's what I was saying. Being patient and wait. If it gets into this red box, I will consider getting short. If not, I'll wait for another setup that gets to where I want it to get. But this looks like a good setup if it if and only if it gets into that red box for a short. Goldman Sachs, same thing. Red box. Red box means shortable area. Look all the way over here, the 30th of August. Highest up bar close before market structure change. Big down. You can see on the 19th we did get right into that red box and failed you can see on the 27th we got right to the penny to the bottom of that red box and it failed will it do it again who knows i don't know it might just go down from here but if we do rally back up into that into that box i'll consider getting short maybe if i had a v1 or a v2 to the downside that would get me, you know, I'd like to have as many signals as I can. So just getting into the box by itself may not be enough. But if I got into the box, had a V1, V2, uh, maybe had a bearish baby or something inside that, that would also be, that would also be good. So I'll just have to see. But again, I'm waiting for somewhere between 511.19 and 505.17 for a possible short area. Microsoft, all right, well, Microsoft has actually been quite weak. And you can see that on Friday, we did have a technically a buy signal on Microsoft. We went below the 200 during the day, closed above it at the end of the day. Good risk to reward ratio. Definitely, I'll give you that. But the reason that I didn't take this trade on Friday was the relative market strength of Microsoft. Look, it was down 48 cents on a day when the, that, the NASDAQ rallied quite strong. So this, that tells you a lot. That tells you that, you know, Microsoft's one of the big mega cap tech stocks, but for whatever reason, the buyers just weren't there on Microsoft. So yes, I could have taken this trade because it did intraday reject the 200, but I didn't. What I like the look of better is down in this green area. Why? Well, again, this is a bullish order block. This is your lowest low close before market structure change anywhere between 410.65 and 4, 480 cents. This is this green box. 
this is a viable area. Now, if it rejected, if it comes down and rejects the top of that bullish order block, it's possible I would buy it there. Um, but ideally, look, here's the 250 day moving average. This is a deep dip buy, right? 200, 250, 300. Well, I like the fact that the 250 day moving average, a major deep dip by moving average is inside also the bullish order block. So that's why I highlighted in blue here, this is a pretty good area um, for a nice setup. And it gives me a good risk to reward ratio if we do it off the 200, right? So if we go below the, uh, the 250, if we go below the 250, pop back above it, has it gives me a good risk to reward ratio in addition to being inside this bullish order block that's a good location now that is 13 points lower than it is now does it mean it's going to get there definitely not this could be the bottom and it could just take off from here but that's what I was, that's what i keep talking about wait for the market to get exactly where you want to get if it came down rejected that 250 inside this bullish order block most likely i would take that trade don't know because that would be a really nice deep dip by trade in addition to the bullish order block and by the way I, I talk a lot about deep dip buys and obviously I teach them in my in my one-on-one -on -one course but I have a really good online course available at udemy.com the links in the description of this video where I teach you step by step how to trade the deep dip buy approach it's very affordable it's between 30 and 50 dollars it's nine and a half hours of video and instruction I have sold so many of those around the world and I think it has like a 4.8 or 4.9 stars out of five. Uh, so it's been, a you know, people have really enjoyed that and it's a great way to get started. And like I said, it is very affordable. So like, if you want to get started with something and don't want to do the one-on-one -on -one yet, that's a really good place to get started. So I really like this trade. This is one of my favorite potential trades. I just don't know if it's going to get there. So we'll see. But uh Maybe a V1 or a V2 inside the uh, bullish order block. That could also get me long. But if I had my druthers and uh, could wave a magic wand, having it come down to that 250 would be a really, really good potential trade. RBLX, Roblox. Okay, well, I have a green box here. Why? Well, it's a 200-day moving average. This is simply a deep dip by approach and if we did get down to this 200 day moving average where the green box is most likely we'd be in the very low 30 rsis or maybe under 30 over 30 that's a great confluence and under 30 over 30 on uh, uh in, in addition to rejecting the 200 day moving average so i don't know if it's going to get there uh it certainly might the way that it looks it's been very very weak but i would consider getting long rblx if we reject the 200 for a simple deep dip buy rio tinto okay rio tinto uh this is a good example of what is called a island reversal island reversal is like an abandoned baby it's just more than one bar you can see we obviously gapped way up, but you can see on Thursday, see how we gap down here, leaving this hole. That's why they call it an, or a, uh, an island reversal, They're like little islands. So we gap up and then we gap down below the island. This is very likely the top, at least temporarily, for Rio. I mean, we've had this huge move up and I mean, certainly it could go higher, we, we don't know. But the question for me is, I, I could have taken this trade on Friday. I definitely could have, but I didn't want to. I wanted to see if we could get, get a little higher entry somewhere in here. My ideal entry on this one would be halfway of October 2nd's down bar. See the big down bar? Well, halfway of that, they're at 71.30. There's going to be some inherent resistance there more times than not. And so that would be inherent resistance of the big down bar in addition to being inside of the bearish island reversal. So I'll have to play this one by ear. I, I just have to, I'll know it when I see it. Uh, but my guess here, and I could be wrong, but my guess here is that the high of Rio is in. It certainly may come back up into this kind of island of bars. Uh, 
And in addition to that, look, we also lost the 5 EMA, we lost the 70 RSI. So this indicates that a short-term top is in, but again, I'm probably going to wait for a move up to 71.30. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, sorry. For a potential short. And if I do, then I'll place a 2 ATR stop above, 4 ATR profit target below. And then last but not least on the daily is uh, TLT. These are bonds. Well, look up here. I was just talking about island reversals. This is an island reversal. We gap up, we gap down. That island reversal nailed it, didn't it? bearish island reversal same as real it's to see it's the same kind of thing so um anyway bonds have sold off uh, a lot and uh i like this position potential position a lot i think we're a little bit oversold and uh the 200 day moving average down here at 94.32 so it's about a dollar 20 below where we are right now uh, but I think it makes sense just because it, it, it's a bit overdone as far as the move down. Uh, the, you know, as TLT moves down, interest rates go up. But I think the move up in interest rates have been a little bit overdone uh, considering everything that's going on in the world and economy and this and that. But I am looking for a rejection of this 200 day moving average we're also at a 33 35 rsi so if we do get down here depending how how long it takes us to get down here then we may have a nice confluence of a 30 r rejection of a 30 rsi and a 200 day moving average so i really quite like this one i don't know if it's going to get there uh, but if it does, I will definitely consider getting long TLT. So those are the dailies. Let's quickly do the weeklies. Again, these are weekly bars here. Okay. This is Adobe, A-D-B-E. Well, I like the signals here on Adobe. In this blue area box, this is a, a bullish order block because back here on the 31st of May, the high and the low, the lowest bar closed before market structure change. Anywhere within this blue box here uh, is a bullish place to buy, more times than not. But what I like about the 200-day moving, 200-week moving average, excuse me, is that it's dovetailing right with the top of that order block, and it gives me a very good risk to reward in line in the sand to base my trade off of. So what I'm looking for next week at the end. Uh, next week on Friday is a rejection of the 200 week moving average. And if it rejects it, gives me a good risk to reward ratio, I would definitely consider getting long Adobe here after this big sell off. And in addition to the bullish order block and, and uh, what's going on here. So I like that trade. Don't know if it's going to get there, but if it does, I'll consider it. Advanced micro devices, AMD. Okay, red box. This means short here on the 12th of July. Your highest up bar closed before market structure change. Market structure has changed to the downside. Therefore, a rally back in to the red box would be the shortable area. What that looks like, I don't know. You know, if I get a V1 or a V2, um, you know, if it, I, I probably won't get short here if it just rejects the bottom of the order block because then my risk to reward ratio is not that great. I'd want to see it at least get higher into the box or ideally reject the high and then go back down because then it would give me the best risk to reward ratio. But we'll have to see. By the way, the earnings are coming up here. I never hold through earnings. So if I do take this trade next week, I would have to exit before earnings. So that's AMD Boeing. <coughs> All right, I'm already long Boeing on the daily as I went over earlier. But what I like here on Boeing, and you can see this green box down here, this is the weekly. This green box would be a very good place to buy Boeing based upon what is called a wolf wave. I've talked about wolf waves before, but a wolf wave has five points. We have point one, we have point two, we have point three, we have point four, and then the buyable area is 0.5. But the key is 0.2 has to be higher than 0.1, which it is. 0.3 has to be lower than 0.1, which it is. 0.4 has to be higher than 0.1, which it is. 
and then 0.5 is the extension of 0.1 and 0.3. Ah, I know, a little bit confusing. You don't get these wolf waves very often, but when you do, they tend to be really good trades. So again, I'm already long on the daily, but from a weekly perspective, if we came down and rejected this bottom channel, and the channel again is 0.1 to 0.3, channeled out into time that is the 0.5 area and my stop would of course be a 2 ATR below and my end of our stop would be a close below that uh, trend line and by the way the thing with wolf waves is the projected target area after the wolf wave uh, triggers is the channel between 0.1 and 0.4 so it would predict predict that you would go up here in about the $200 level. So anyway, we'll see. But essentially that area that I'm looking for on the weekly is somewhere between 147 to 141. That is where the channel line of the wolf way would be on the weekly. Let's hope it doesn't get down there because I'm long on the daily. But if it does get down there, uh, I, that would get me out of my daily long but maybe into a weekly position. And then last but not least is IBB. Okay, green box. So I'm looking for a buy simply here on the 200 week moving average. You can see there was a lot of resistance here and then we broke out above it. And once you break out of, uh, when you break out above resistance and that resistance becomes support and that 200 week moving average dovetails right there into resistance. So uh, that is at like 138.01. So it's down there a ways. Not sure if it's going to get there, but if it does, I'll consider taking the, the, the trade. So um, anyway, I hope this uh, was helpful, everyone. I appreciate you being here. Again, if I can help you out with the uh, uh, um, creating a process for yourself. I'm very happy to teach you all the, the the rules and the processes that I use for all different trading strategies. All you have to do is send me an email. We can get this discussion started. You're going to be a much better trader, I'm sure, after taking the course. And um, I have a lot of traders around the world that would attest to that. So reach out. Again, I have the Udemy course for the deep dip buy so many good reviews on that so many so many messages of greg i learned so much on this so uh, that's available too the udemy.com link is in the description and again if you like the the uh the podcast today if you found some value i'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button i always like to leave off with please try to go out and do something nice for someone today the world would be a much better place if we could all do something nice for one other person if you could also do something nice for an animal today I would really appreciate that as well. So uh, God willing, I will see you next weekend. Again, if you have any comments or questions, I'll do my best to answer them. But thanks for investing the time today. I hope it was helpful, everyone. Have a really good weekend. Be safe and uh, be safe with your trading next week as always. Thank you so much. And on the way out here, I have to run the U.S. Legal Slammer. U.S. government require stock Stock options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind 
which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.